This is called a cold open, but someone who's not cold, but rather red hot, is one Adrian Perez batting a team high, 375. And the Lax team wins a thriller at Geezy Field. A Temple goalie stands on her head. Al Sports starts now. I can do that. No, you can't. Now for the more formal open. Hello, alongside Thomas, Andrew, Monfaletto, I'm Eric Pliny. Joining us later, Dam Koob gives you a scoop of cherry and white at Chodoff Field. And Coach Al Golden answers some questions looming over the 2010 football season, including the guy or guys who make a living behind center. But first, we're off to the diamond. We like to stay positive here on Al Sports, so when I tell you that the baseball team entered its contest against St. Joe's at 3-24, and I'll also tell you that they have four hitters batting over 300. But against the Big Five rival Hawks, the performance of the day came from the mound, not the plate. Fantasy sleeper pick Tyler Horse took the ball for the Owls and tossed seven innings without giving up an earned run. He struck out five to move him to second on the team with strikeouts with 26 on the year. In the bottom of the 10th, junior college transfer Adrian Perez laced a single to left field to score Jaber Khan for the walk-off win, and the Owls proceeded to throw haymakers at Perez to show their appreciation. Owls win 3-2 and improve to 4-24 and on the year. The previous weekend, the Owls took on the St. Louis Billikens. Coach Valley switched up the weekend rotation, putting hurler Ben White on the mound for the first game of the series. White threw a complete game with 10 strikeouts. He's fanned 48 batters on the season. That's second most in the conference. In the seventh, though, St. Louis stud Danny Brock cranked his 12th home run on the year uh, to put his Billikens up 5-4. And Bryant Cotton closed the door in the ninth for a complete game of his own. On Sunday, the Owls only managed one run against St. Louis starter Alex Allman as Matt Mongiardini took his seventh loss of the year. Rafael Cordero, Tony Giussino, and Adrian Perez recorded the only hits for the Owls as they fell 6-1. Danielle Fagan leads all Temple athletes to participate in a sport using a bat and a ball with six home runs. This long shot came in the first of two against Wagner. The Owls picked up their 12th win of the season, 6-3, and their 19th loss of the season on the back end of a doubleheader, 4-3. Freshman Crystal Neiman pitched seven innings of complete baseball. She almost went the distance in Game 2. Senior pitcher Crystal Maris Ill did not start, but Wagner came back in the bottom of the seventh to avoid the home sweep. In the Owls' last conference matchup, they split a pair against Dayton, this time dropping the first game 10-2. Sophomore rookie Rachel Knabel went 4-4 four for four on the day, including her first career jack. Game ended in the fifth with the eight-run rule in effect. Game two for the Owls, it was Fagan with the nightcap, a two-run blast in the seventh, 6-2. The final score, Neiman again with the complete game, puts the chokehold on the Dukes. A two-run seventh ended with a double play ball. Fagan is leading the team in home runs batting average and RBI in her second stint with the Owls. She transferred back to Temple this season after leaving to New Mexico State after her freshman season. Well, Duke may have had the big three, but this year Temple's trio of basketball stars dominated the big five. Already earning all-conference recognition, Lavoy Allen, Juan Fernandez, and Ryan Brooks recently received big five distinctions. Allen and Brooks made first-team all-big five, while Fernandez grabbed a second-team selection. The three all-stars helped lead Temple to its first outright big five title since 1996. But the man calling the shots deserves some credit as well. After being named A-10 Coach of the Year, the Herb Brooks Athletic Club named Fran Dunphy the Eastern College Coach of the Year. This time last year, Bonnie Rosen's lacrosse team was on the verge of missing an A-10 tournament berth that Temple would host. The Owls would be sidelined to ball duty selling tickets as they watched teams battle for the A-10 championship on their home field. The Owls held a 2-2 two -two conference record going into this one. Here come the Dukes. Owls even their record just three days earlier with a win against St. Bonnie's, but getting on the board here early versus the Dukes up 9-8. to eight. You're seeing goal, uh, four unanswered goals, including uh, two by or one by senior Chelsea Rosaic and Kelsey Zenick. Ah, but the Dukes would come back here. Quick to respond with four goals of their own. This one here by sophomore Katie Ricart. The Dukes kept the pressure on as senior Kat McNish put the Dukes right back in it with two of her four goals coming here. Making the score 10 to 12, Owls up by one, but senior Jess Colucci was just stellar in goal. 
had a huge day just getting a piece of this one. And then again here. Kuguchi says that. There can only be one Highlander. The Owls would finish 18 to 17, your final score, improving their record. Two more games left to go for the A-10 championship. The women's gymnastic team will compete for the USAG Collegiate National Championship April 15th through the 17th at Texas Women's University in Denton, Texas. The Owls will be one of eight teams competing for the chip and are currently ranked seventh in the USAG rankings. Now to a more stationary sport. The Owls' golf team stroked the ball 891 times as a team at the Princeton Invitational all the way to a team best sixth place finish out of 15 teams. Junior Andrew Mason led the Owls with two over par, finished tied for fourth, and the Owls' number one golfer Eric Plisco was calling out to the legend of Bagger Vance. He struggled on a day finishing 75th overall, shooting 13 over par. After falling to Binghamton 6-1, the Owls women's tennis team defeated University of Maryland Baltimore County by the same score on Wednesday. The Owls took five of the six singles matches, highlighted by a dominating performance by Anastasia Rukavishnikova, who dominated Carmen Jackman 6-1, 6-2. The Owls finished up their regular season at a conference game, just tightening the rackets before the A-10 tourney they were handled by number 58 ranked Binghamton dropping six sets to their one, but a tight matchup at home against UMBC, they dropped the contest four sets to three in a tie break in doubles action. Philip Rams was flawless, not dropping a set all day, showing lots of love to Chris Meyer. Unfortunately, Philip Rams' brother Casper dropped his match, allowing Freddie Vorman to come from behind in the final two sets after winning the first. The Owls, the four seed, will either take on number five seed St. Louis or number 12 Fordham at 2 p.m. Australia, Russia, Poland, Estonia, and some place called Philadelphia, Pennsylvania are the five countries or states represented on the Temple tennis team. And I checked on a map. Those are in order from east to west. Tyson Wachlisch has more on the nations uniting right here on North Broad. On any given day, you will find players from nine different countries, up to seven different languages spoken. To visit each of their hometowns in one trip would earn you more than 25,000 frequent flyer miles. This is the only way you will truly get to know the Temple men's tennis team. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's one of the good experiences about uh, having foreign players on my team. I can, uh, if I want to ever go to Poland or Russia or Australia, I can just give them a call and I'll have a place to stay and everything. Morrow is one of only two Americans on the team. As for his teammates, playing so far from home is nothing new. The young team is having a successful season, owed largely in part to its chemistry and cohesiveness. I feel like they're all my brothers, I don't know. I really like all the guys and uh, we're getting all together, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> There's not one senior on the squad this year, so each of these nine students will have at least another year to brush up on a handful of different languages most of us will never see offered in a classroom. I'm trying to learn some Polish now or maybe expand their Russian vocabulary. I know da and yes. Da, all right, that's, uh, that's about it, though. I don't know that much. Few people will have a chance to experience diversity on the level it exists here at Temple. Fewer still have the chance to play, train, and bond with others from around the world, united only by sport. For the men's tennis team, these players wouldn't have it any other way. From the Student Pavilion, I'm Tyson Wachlisch, Owl Sports.